Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have some more examples where we have fractions and negative exponents. So how do we deal with those? Well, first of all, we realize that whenever we have something in parentheses raised to some exponent, it applies to everything inside the parentheses. In other words, this is equal to the quantity 2 thirds to the second power times x squared to the second power times y cubed to the second power. Now you can see that the same rule apply, applies as before. So here we can write this as 2 to the second power divided by 3 to the second power. And here we have an exponent raised to exponent, so we multiply exponents, so this becomes x to the fourth. And here again we multiply exponents, which is y to the sixth, which is equal to 4 over 9 x to the fourth y to the sixth. But what do we do when we have a negative exponent up there? Well, one easy thing to do is simply take the inverse of that and change it to a positive exponent. In other words, this can be written as 3 squared divided by a squared b cubed, all of it raised to the positive 2 power. And now we've gotten rid of that negative exponent, which makes things a little bit easier. Then just like before, this can now be written as 3 squared raised to the second power divided by a squared raised to the second power b cubed raised to the second power. Again, you can see how this exponent applies to everything inside the parentheses. And then we use the rule that if we have an exponent raised to an exponent, we simply multiply exponents. So this is equal to 3 to the fourth power divided by a to the fourth power b to the sixth power simply by multiplying exponents. And finally, we can simplify this. 3 to the fourth power is 81 divided by a to the fourth, b to the sixth. And that is the final format of that expression. And finally, the last one. Notice that we have a negative exponent inside and a negative exponent outside. So we're going to take that one step at a time. First, let's make this into a positive exponent by writing it like this. y cubed in the numerator divided by x squared in the denominator. Do you have to do that? Not really, but it's one way to kind of simplify things right, right off the bat by simply getting rid of negative exponents whenever possible. We still have the negative 2 over there. Now again we can get rid of that negative by flipping the fraction over. So this is equal to x squared divided by y cubed raised to a positive exponent. And now we apply that positive exponent to both the numerator in the denominator, so this is equal to x squared squared divided by y cubed squared. And now we use the rule again that if we have an exponent raised to the exponent, we multiply exponents. So this is equal to x to the fourth divided by y to the sixth. Could you have done this differently? Certainly, we could have just immediately applied the negative exponent to what we have inside the parentheses without changing it to a positive exponent first. So that means that we could have written it as follows, x to the minus 2 raised to the minus 2 power, and y to the third raised to the minus 2 power, like this. I guess I didn't really need the outside parentheses, so let me just go ahead and remove those. I like parentheses because it sometimes separates things, but we don't need them here. So we can simply write it like that. Now we can apply the rule that if we have an exponent raised to an exponent, we multiply. So since we have a negative 2 times a negative 2, that becomes a positive 4. That would be x to the fourth times y to the negative 6. And now we can move that to the denominator because the negative exponent. So this is equal to x to the fourth divided by y to the sixth. And notice you get the exact same answer as before. So you have a choice in which way you want to attack it. I like the idea of getting rid, rid of negative exponents first, working inside the parentheses and then outside the parentheses, but you don't have to do that. You can simply immediately follow the rule that the exponent here applies to everything inside, simply do the product, and you get the exact same result. So it comes down to what method you prefer, but that is how it's done.